discussing. Mr. President, three years ago, you argued that an invasion of Iraq would create a new stage of Arab-Israeli peace. And yet today, there is an Iraqi prime minister who has been sharply critical of Israel. Arab governments, despite your arguments, who first criticized Hezbollah, have now changed their tune. Now they're sharply critical of Israel. And despite, from both of you, warnings to Syria and Iran to back off support from Hezbollah, effectively, Mr. President, your words are being ignored. Mm. So what has happened to America's clout in this region that you've committed yourself to transform? Uh, David, it's an interesting period um, because um, instead of having foreign policies based upon trying to create a sense of stability, we have a foreign policy that addresses the root causes of violence and instability. Um, for a while, American foreign policy was just just hope everything is calm, kind of manage calm. But beneath the surface brewed a lot of resentment and anger that was manifested and it's uh, on September the 11th. And so we have uh, we've taken a foreign policy that says, on the one hand, we will protect ourselves from further attack in the short run by, by being aggressive and chasing down the killers and bringing them to justice. And make no mistake, they're still out there. And they would like to harm our respective peoples because of what we stand for. The long term to defeat this ideology, and they're bound by an ideology. Uh, you defeat it with a, a more hopeful ideology called freedom. And I, look, I fully understand some people don't believe it's possible for freedom and democracy to overcome this ideology of hatred. I understand that. I just happen to believe it is possible, and I believe it will happen. And so what you're seeing is uh, you know, a clash of governing styles, for example. You know, you know, the, 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 the notion of democracy beginning to emerge, emerge scares the ideo ideologues, the totalitarians, those who want to impose their vision. It just frightens them. And so they respond. They've always been violent. You know, I hear this ama amazing kind of uh, editorial thought that says all of a sudden Hezbollah's become violent because we're promoting democracy. They have been violent for a long period of time. Or Hamas. One reason why the Palestinians still suffer is because there are militants who refuse to accept a Palestinian state based upon democratic principles. And so what the world is seeing is a, is a desire by this country and, and our, our allies to defeat the ideology of hate with an ideology that has worked and that brings hope. And one of the challenges, of course, is to convince people that, you know, Muslims would like to be free. You know, that there's other people other than people in Britain and America that would like to be free in the world. There's this kind of almost, uh, uh, you know, kind of weird kind of elitism that says, well, maybe, uh, maybe certain people in certain parts of the world shouldn't be free. Maybe it's best just to let them sit in these tyrannical societies. And uh, our foreign policy rejects that concept. We don't accept it. And so we're working. And uh, this is, uh, I said the other day when these attacks took place, I said it should be a moment of clarity for people to see the stakes in the 21st century. I mean, uh, there's an unprovoked attack on a democracy. Why? I happen to believe because uh, progress is being made uh, toward democracies. And I believe that, uh, I also believe that uh, Iran would like to exert additional influence in the region. A theocracy would like to spread its influence using surrogates. And so uh, I'm as determined as ever to continue fostering a foreign policy uh, based upon liberty. And I think it's going to work unless we lose our nerve and quit. And this government isn't going to quit. Hold right. on a second. Yep. Well, David, we went to the G8 and worked with our allies and got a remarkable statement on what took place. We're working to get a United Nations resolution on Iran. Uh, we're working to have a Palestinian state. 
But the reason why you asked the question is because terrorists are trying to stop that progress. And uh, we'll ultimately prevail because they're, they have, they're, their ideology is so dark and so dismal that uh, when people really think about it, it's, uh, it'll be rejected. They just got a different tool to use than we do. They kill innocent lives to achieve objectives. That's what they do. And they're good. They get on the TV screens and they get people to ask questions about, well, you know, this, that, or the other. I mean, they're able to, they're able to kind of say to people, don't, don't come and bother us because we will kill you. And uh, my attitude is, is that now's the time to be firm. And we've got a great weapon on our side, and that is freedom and liberty. And it's got the, that, those two concepts have the, got the capacity to defeat ideologies of hate. I don't think 